Adorable treasured fox, divine doctor mother overturning the heavens. Chapter 51. Be good, don't move part 2. You are lying. Bai Ji's sadness quickly eased over despite her claim of loving Dai Kang, my mother wanted to give you jewelry to wear, but it's you who refused it. Now you are twisting the truth to suit yourself. Smirking at the audacity of the girl, she glares back with danger in her eye, if that's the case. Grandfather, please bring out the paperwork that you filed for the dowry back then. According to the rules, if the mother dies, her dowry must be passed on to her biological daughter as inheritance. Now that I'm an adult, it's only proper that I take back what's mine. It's common practice in this world for men to take on multiple wives, therefore it's not uncommon to find a husband ignoring their original wife for a new one. In order not to let the wife's property fall into the wrong hands, a law was eventually passed, stating whatever dowry that's left behind must be given to their biological child for management. Upon hearing this remark, Bai Zheng Xiang and his precious daughter Bai Ji both went ghostly white. All right. Making her hump sound, old Lord Lan happily answers the call, your mother's dowry was all listed at the etiquette department prior to the marriage. When it's ready, I will personally go to the Bai house to retrieve what's yours my dear. This certainly left the heartless man in a bind, this wretched girl must do this to me. Those dowries have all been spent, where am I supposed to find them again? Bai Yang, Nang Gong Yi can't watch anymore. Showing disgust in his eye, he eyed the woman that used to be his fiance. Lord Bai is still your father and it was you who made the first move. Don't you feel your actions are too much right now? Even if the Bai Yan back then was considered a useless person who can't cultivate, but at least her character was good. Now she's not only arrogant and rude, she's also entangled with Dai Kang the Sovereign Prince. Such a dirty woman, no matter how beautiful, he won't bother to take another glance. I only want to take back my dowry, how is that being too much? Can it be your highness don't recognize the rules set by the ancestors? Bai Yan casts a short glance at the prince, her tone practically emotionless that it stings. Fuming at the snub, Meng Gong Yi didn't know how to talk back right now. There's no way he can openly admit he's not willing to recognize the long-standing rule. But watching that arrogant attitude of the woman, his heart can't accept it. Bai Yan, Lord Bai and Madame Bai's character are very good so there's no way they would misappropriate your dowry. On the contrary, if they do give it to you, won't it be just wasted away on another man? Gnashing his teeth, now it's Nang Gong Yi's turn to become shameless because his sentence was indirectly telling Dai Kang how horrible Bai Yan's character was. Chuckling, Bai Yan scoffs it off perfectly, he's a man that relied on a woman to get started and then turn tail as soon as he's successful, even then you say his character is trustworthy. Are you listening to yourself? Bai Yan, when did you become so nitpicky? Nang Gong Yi shakes his head like someone truly disappointed, if you kneel in front of Lord Bai this instant and apologize, perhaps he will forgive you for all your fault. At this moment, without any indication, a powerful hand suddenly came from behind and mercilessly pulled Bai Yan in. How come I didn't know my woman would be reduced to bowing before an ant? That cold and tyrannical voice echoes across the banquet hall, sending the entire audience into utter silence once again. Being looked down upon in a condescending way, Nang Gong Yi's face tensed up until even his veins could be seen. Dai Xiaoyang Not replying, Dai Kang only sent a glance back his way. In that second, the oppressive aura was so strong that the prince nearly suffocated. Be good. Don't move. Sensing the woman in his embrace being bad again, he tightens his grip and gently whispered into her ear, it'd be a shame for your delicate hands to be chopped off. Bai Yan was so frustrated and angry right now. No matter what she did, this man would either say he will chop off her leg or her hand, it's like he's treating her as a little pet that he can do as he wish. Adorable treasured fox, divine doctor mother overturning the heavens. Chapter 52. Face Slapping Part 1. For some unknown reasons, Nang Gong Yi felt very unhappy inside when watching Dai Kang embracing the woman in his arms. Bai Yan, he wanted to speak out again but was interrupted by the recipient herself. Are you really not going to return my mother's dowry? From the beginning to the end, her eyes never once idled at Nang Gong Yi's face. Recalling the image of the girl kicking him across the room, Bai Zheng Xiang became furious again, your mother is my deceased wife and her body is also buried inside my ancestral tomb. 
No matter how I look at it, I don't see why the dowry should be inherited by you. Besides, there is still by CEO around so why should I give it to you? The dowry had already been spent so where was he supposed to find him again? Turning cold in her eye, if you don't return the dowry today then I will have you puke him back out several folds in the future. Return. Don't make me laugh. Openly smearing at the remark, Bai Yan, just now I was careless and didn't hold up a guard, that's why you were able to land that sneak attack on me. Funny part is you think that's enough to be your capital of threatening me. The crowd fell into an uproar, so that's why, it's because the man there didn't hold up a guard, as if this useless woman that can't even cultivate would be able to kick her own father so far. But, by Zheng Xiang's gaze turned even colder, I as your father, to face such disrespect from you, have the right to expel you from the Bai family. Although before this the heartless bastard also announced he's expelling the girl, but that's all done in private. Now that he's openly declaring this here, the meaning was totally different. Great. Old Lord Lan's heavy and powerful voice rang out right after that previous statement, if your Bai house don't want her then that's perfect. Our land house will include her in our lineage book, and in the future, her name will also be enshrined in our ancestral shrine. This Bai Zheng Xiang can mistake a pearl for a fish's eye, he will definitely regret it for the rest of his life. Just a girl that can't cultivate, go ahead and take her if you people like. Irony could be felt not only from his voice, but also his gaze. Don't blame me for not reminding you people. This ungrateful girl only knows how to eat and play with no other talent. If you want to raise an idler then go right head. Originally Lan Yu uncle was keeping himself quiet beside his father, but upon hearing the self-righteous words there, he couldn't resist sending the ignorant man some more looks. Doesn't this guy know Bai Yang can use Dan pills to feed her own pets like sugar beans? Heck, that simple fourth grade Dan pill from before is enough to buy his whole Bai house. Ha ha, bursting out a laugh, old Lord Lan was clearly overjoyed right now, since both Lord Kang and His Highness is here, I like to ask both men to be a witness. From this day forward, my granddaughter Bai Yang will no longer have anything to do with the Bai family. Nang Gong Yi's complexion didn't look so good right now. The Lu Huo kingdom was a state of filial piety. By using this simple word, it's enough to crush a person to death. Therefore, even if Bai Zheng Xiang was in the wrong, he had expected the woman to beg for forgiveness here, not like this. Where's the sadness? Where's the pained look? The only thing that's happening here was Dai Kang embracing that woman without a care in the world. Very well, I will bear witness to this decision. Dai Kang's domineering gaze shifts over to the man in question, his lips bloodthirsty and threatening. If anyone dares to disregard my command, I will have his legs crushed and fed to the dogs. Adorable treasured fox, divine doctor mother overturning the heavens. Chapter 53, Face Slapping Part 2. Feeling stuffy in his heart, Bai Zheng Xiang became extremely annoyed. What, do you expect me to regret breaking off my relationship with her? My Bai family will never care for an idler who don't contribute. Humph, then I hope you will keep up with your words today. In the future you better not come haunt my granddaughter. Cold in his face, old Lord Lands in a fury began to seep out without his intent. Just the thought of the girl's humiliating treatment at these people's hand made his heart ache with pain. Grandfather, from Dai Kang's embrace, Bai Yan breaks free and ran towards the old grandpa, all the while not forgetting to send a short glare at the possessive man. You only just finished your 60th birthday not long ago, yet I couldn't come back in time to attend the celebration. To make up for it, I got here a special gift for you. A gift. Finally, Bai Ji found her opening. Making a sarcastic remark. Talk about shameless and not being self-aware. A tiny insignificant gift and you have the audacity to call it special. Since the day when she fell victim to Bai Shiakin's framing, the girl had gone all in and no longer bothered to maintain her outer image as much as before. Moreover, her hatred for Bai Yan had already reached the point of seeping into her very bones. Naturally she would say whatever's on her mind now that it's come to this. Ignoring the idiotic girl, Bai Yan didn't even shift her gaze. Grandfather, you will definitely like this gift. She then went ahead to make a loud whistle by pinching her fingers against her lip. Just as old Lord Lan was wondering what sort of gift he's going to get, a crisp sharp chirp broke his train of thought. 
From the night sky, a fiery red line like the sun itself left a deep impression on the darkness. This. What is this? Everyone inside the banquet hall could see the light. In their amazement, not a single eye could move away from that spot. That was until the light itself arrived at their doorstep. It's a very beautiful bird with blood red feathers. Its image was like the flames itself, burning the night away. And then there are those eyes. Transparently green, it's like an agate, stunning and hypnotic. Turning dark in his complexion, Nangong Yi blurts out his thought, Demon Beast, Searing Flame Phoenix. Demon Beast, Searing Flame Phoenix. Their eyes widened with disbelief, unsure why a creature like this would appear here of all places. Of course, none managed to connect the bird with Bai Yan's whistle just now. Father, this bird is so beautiful. Naturally, the female gender was completely defenseless against such beautiful things. Unable to divert her gaze, Bai Ji clings onto Bai Zheng Xiang's sleeve and began to beg like a spoiled child, please go get that bird for me, okay? Now this left the man in quite the bind. First let's not mention the level of this demon bird, just the fact that it's part of the demon beast family was enough to decide the outcome, he can't control it. In this world, there's only the demon beast sect who can control such creatures, according to the public anyways. Raising his chin, Dai Kang looks down in a condescending manner at the girl, based on what can you make it yield to you. That's a sky-class demon bird. This was the first sentence Dai Kang ever said to Bai Ji. This should have been a thing worthy of celebration for the girl, but the tone only made her turn white from shame. Father, tearing up like the usual her, Bai Ji cries with injustice in her eye. Softly exhaling a sigh, Bai Zheng Xiang can only speak the truth, Lord Kang is right. The demon beasts in this world are all very arrogant in their temperament, they will not easily yield to mankind. But why? Why would this demon bird suddenly show up here? Let's not mention Bai Zheng Xiang, not a single person in attendance understood why this was happening. A sky-class demon bird was no ordinary being. Take old Lord Lan and Bai Zheng Xiang himself, they two are only at the sky-class level and that's enough to propel them into the league of a first-rate family here. Adorable treasured fox, divine doctor mother overturning the heavens. Chapter 54. Face Slapping Part 3. So what if it's a sky-class demon bird? Father, aren't you also the same, a sky-class martialist? Why can't you subdue it? Bai Ji bites her lip, unable to divert her gaze away from the beautiful phoenix. If she could control it, the whole city would become envious of her. Gee, stop your fussing. Contrary to his usual indulgent attitude, Bai Zheng Xiang was rather stern this time around. Going dark in the face, that's a demon bird, not something you can control so don't irritate it. Sad inside, Bai Ji didn't want to accept this reality but couldn't do anything to remedy the situation. Ignoring the crowd, the searing flame phoenix makes a low bird call and then slowly walked towards Bai Yan with elegance and pride. This naturally caught the attention of everyone. Their gaze firmly pinned to the flaming red figure and the woman that's waiting. Grandfather, giving the phoenix only one glance, Bai Yan shifts her attention back to the old grandpa, do you like this gift I prepared for you? Silence hanged over the banquet hall. If a needle were to drop to the floor right now, it would definitely be heard. Hesitant in his voice, old Lord Lan looks to the girl, the gift is. It can't be this searing flame phoenix. No, no way. For a minute there, everyone here was coming up with this idea. However, it was firmly pushed back down. Who's Bai Yan? A useless woman who got pregnant and eloped with a man. With her ability, how can she subdue a sky-class demon beast? Under the signaling look of Bai Yan, the bird begins to lower its proud head and prostrated itself before the old lord. This was the custom of the phoenix race. If a member of the phoenix race were to ever surrender itself before another being, they will lower their head and prostrate themselves on the ground. This proves they are willing to become their mount. Roughly rubbing her eyes, Bai Ji couldn't believe the scene. Clenching her fist into a hard ball, she nearly bit through her lips from how angry she was. This, Lan Yu's uncle breathing became a little tense, this searing flame phoenix is your grandfather's gift. That's not your average demon beast out there, it's a sky-class searing flame phoenix. Even in the demon beast sect, there's only a few that could subdue such a being. 
If the Land family can get their hands on this phoenix, that would mean they will once again break into the first-rate noble family class. Confirming it with hum, Baiyan didn't beat around the bush. Grandfather is getting old so in order to make traveling easier for him, I specifically prepared this phoenix for him. This way he won't have to walk so much. Nearly everyone were gasping for air, some were even twitching in the eye at the explosive statement. Too old, inconvenient when traveling. This old lord looks absolutely fantastic, which part of that looks old? And don't you think it's too extravagant to use a phoenix as a ride? Father, seeing the prostrating bird before old Lord Lan, by Ji's jealousy completely twisted her, didn't you say all demon beasts are arrogant and proud? Why is it willing to submit to Bai Yan? Ignoring the girl's questioning, Bai Zheng Xiang only looked towards Bai Yan with his gloomy face. You did this on purpose didn't you? Deliberately hiding away this phoenix so I would drive you away from the Bai house. Adorable treasured fox, divine doctor mother overturning the heavens. Chapter 55, Face Slapping Part 4. If he had known that she's in possession of a phoenix like this, he would never have driven her out of the Bai house. Because whatever she owns will have to be offered up to him, Bai Zheng Xiang, the father of the girl. If this wasn't face slapping then what else can it be? Intentional. Bai Yan shoots a powerful glance at the man, you actually think you are worthy of me scheming against you. You. Bai Zheng Xiang wanted to snap again but was firmly stopped by the sight of the bird nesting in front of old Lord Lan. Daughter. I was only joking just now. How can I possibly break off our relationship when you are my precious daughter? By now Mangong Yi had also came back to reality. Hearing the way his father-in-law was speaking, his tone too took a 180, a family should be harmonious. Since Lord Bai is willing to forgive you then I shall be the judge and wipe the slate clean. The words from before won't count. In reality, Mang Gong Yi didn't understand it himself why he would do this. Compared to back then, the Bai Yan standing before him now was far too different. It's like she's a completely different person without him in her eyes. Realizing this fact, Mang Gong Yi can't even describe the uncomfortable feeling that's pinching at his heart. Furthermore, he's being pushed around like nothing in front of this Dai Kang. That man's nothing more than a titled royalty. But suddenly, a deep and dominating voice came from behind. It seems that you people are not heeding my words. Though aloof as ever, it's enough to turn by Zheng Xiang completely white with fright. To think he would forget that terrifying man just now. Daddy, I want that phoenix. Tugging at her father's sleeve, Bai Ji remains oblivious to the situation and continues to plead for the things which don't belong to her. Have her give it to me, I must have it. Going soft in the heart, Bai Zheng Xiang shifts his gaze back at the silvery purple figure, Lord Kang, this is after all my family's business, you. Before he could even finish his sentence, a bone-chilling laugh interrupted him. So you think you can drive me away as you please and then have me return as you please? Who do you think you are? And what do you take me for? You claim to be my father, but have you ever once done the duties of a father should? Slow and firm in her steps towards the man, all those horrible and painful memories began to surface inside by Yan's head. Of course, they are all from the former owner of this body. She's merely the soul who inherited these memories. Nevertheless, it doesn't hinder her from taking it as her own in, by Yan's, place. All these years, you people occupied my mother's dowry and never once cared for me and my brother. I may be timid back then but I never hated anyone. Then when me and my brother could no longer bear the hunger and was nearly starved to death during winter, what did you do? I ran to you for help only to be kicked out of your study room by you personally. You said I'm a liar. Bai Yan. Old Lord Lan's throat became parched as a layer of glossy liquid filled his old eyes. He never knew his grandchildren's experience would be so horrible. He assumed it's mostly cold shoulders or a lack of favor on that side, but to starve during winter in their childhood. How it pains his old heart knowing he never did anything during all these years. I was young back then, not knowing how to defend myself. If you don't believe it then you can go back and interrogate the house cook. See for yourself how they've been ordered to confiscate our food back then. Stunned by it all, Bai Zheng Xiang truly didn't know. It's not like he never had feelings for this pair of siblings back then, but after so many weeping cries from his current wife complaining about how horrible these kids were, his emotional attachment gradually weakened and became what it was today, anger and hate. 
Regardless of what excuse he makes though, he seems to be forgetting one important factor in his argument, he never bothered to go confirm if it's true or not. Father. Don't listen to her nonsense, Baiji started to get anxious now. Giving Baiyan a fierce glare, she's trying to sow discord in our family. Adorable treasured fox, divine doctor mother overturning the heavens. Chapter 56. Go do a big thing part 1. G. Let's go. A vague gleam could be seen coming off of Bai Zheng Xiang's eye. Bai Yan, if I learn this is all a lie then I won't let you off. Leaving this threat behind, he forcibly pulls at his unwilling daughter and out they went. This Bai Zheng Xiang bastard really think I'm so old that he can do whatever he likes. Old Lord Lan clearly didn't finish venting his steam, and you, don't think I will forgive you just because you are giving me this searing flame phoenix. As soon as Bai Yan retracted her sight from the doorway, she immediately heard this out of the blue grumpy scolding and became stupefied. Grandfather, what have I done wrong? Glaring with one eye and squinting with the other, the old lord kept huffing and puffing like he will blow the whole place down, if you are hungry then why didn't you come over here? Am I not your grandfather? Am I not your mother's father? How can you let those from the Bai family bully you like that? Utterly speechless, Bai Yan can only stand there and silently take it. Not like she can openly tell everyone the one from back then wasn't her. Lan Yu. Without indication, this time the roaring yell was directed at his son. Freaking out on the spot, Lan Yu uncle himself practically crawled over to his father on the knees. Lord Father, is there something wrong? Making a flattering face, he cautiously asks with the brightest smile he can make. Not biting the bait, old Lord Lan grumpily points at the squeamish man. This is how you look after your sister's children. This is how you run the Lan house after I became sick. You. For a while there, old Lord Lan became so angry that he didn't know what to say to this useless son, and you can't inquire about the situation some more. Ever since his sister Lan Yue, the mother passed away, his father here had taken to the bed since. Therefore, the entire well-being of the Lan house fell onto him. Over the years he kept thinking that Bai Zheng Xiang would at least be grateful for their support at the beginning. As such, he never expected the siblings to be so mistreated there. That's definitely his mistake. What are you still standing there for? In one fit, old Lord Lan sends a kick right up the sun's butt. Hurry and go prepare. From today forward, as long as there's my land house in this Lu Huo kingdom then there won't be a buy house. Good timing for this declaration too. After this incident tonight, the guests here will undoubtedly start reconsidering their stance on the competition between these two families. Years ago the land house only fell into its current low state due to the old lord becoming sick. But now, old lord lands not only safe and sound, he also got a sky class demon bird as his mount. This instantly propelled their family back into the first-rate noble family league. However, the Bai House also has a crown princess as their daughter, that's something the Lan House can't compare with. Don't take it for face value that Dai Kang would favor Bai Yan. There's no way the royal family would allow someone unclean like her to marry the sovereign prince. Furthermore, it's rumored that His Majesty intends to marry the youngest daughter of the Bai House to Dai Kang. Bai Yan, where did you get this searing flame phoenix from? Old Madame Lan gently holds onto her granddaughter's hand, her mouth a heartwarming smile. I saved its life before, that's why it submitted to me. And since it's grandfather's birthday, I decided to give it as a gift. That sort of story was more plausible. There's no way Bai Yan can possible subdue a sky-class phoenix. Also, it's said that demon beasts are easy to be thankful if their lives are saved which made perfect sense here for the guests and the Lan family members. Cousin. Grinning the entire way, Lan Xiaoyan girl cousin used the sweetest voice in the world, my birthday is coming soon, when will you go save some more demon beasts to give me? Adorable treasured fox, divine doctor mother overturning the heavens. Chapter 57. Go do a big thing part 2. Bai Yan didn't even need to think about it. Nodding, she answered outright. All right, what sort of demon beast would you like? Fox. I like foxes. They are furry and cute. Fox. That's easy. Sweetly smiling. When it's time I will have the foxes ready and you can choose from the batch. There are too many foxes around her son so it's good to have the girl pick one among the followers. 
The careless remark from her definitely made waves among her family, but Dai Kang on the other hand had other ideas in mind. Tightening his lips into a bloodthirsty grin, he looks to Bai Yan like a winner inside a battle. Without deviating from the expected outcome, Bai Yan herself also noticed her own folly here after seeing that gaze. Shit. How did I forget he's still there? Fox. Just as Bai Yan was trying to come up with a countermeasure, the man had already come up from behind. Cold and numbing, that whispering voice in her ear instantly gave her goosebumps. I'm also looking forward to seeing those foxes. Slightly losing her composure, she wanted to say more but was interrupted by a loud bang. In the middle of the hall, the same silvery wolves as well as that throne was there again. Walking over in big strides, Dai Kang ignored everyone and took his seat. Like how he came before, he disappeared into the night sky in the same manner. Cousin, how did you and Lord Kang meet? Lan Xiaoyun girl cousin became very excited, her expression a bit naughty, that Bai Ji's been dreaming of becoming the man's wife for so long. To see her eat a bad one here tonight, it's so satisfying. In particular was the picture of Dai Kang embracing Bai Yan. For some unknown reason, the girl found the two very suitable for each other. Uncle, did my brother not show up for tonight's banquet? Bai Yan turns to Lan Yu and asked. A bit startled, the man nods, that's right, he didn't show up. Slightly wrinkling her brow, Bai Yan knows her brother's character enough that he won't miss this important occasion. It can't be, something's happened. Uncle, can you send someone to inquire about his condition? I still have something to do. Okay, he nods, but what do you need to do? An evil smile came as a result of that question. Turning to her younger cousin Lan Xiaoyun, Bai Yan asks, Do you want to come do something big with me? Exalted by the question, the girl squeals with excitement, Yes. I want to come along. Let's go cousin, I want to. Let's go then. Pulling the girl's hand, Bai Yan moved swiftly across the streets. Ellipsis. During this hour it's already considered quite late for the night. Nevertheless, there remains a certain figure out and about. This was none other than Bai Ji that's currently kicking the pebbles on the floor. Whenever she thought of the scene with Dai Kang and Bai Yan tonight, her heart would be panged with jealousy. It's almost like thousands of ants were biting in her heart. Then at this moment, she suddenly saw another figure standing under the moonlight up ahead. Bai Yan. Taking advantage of the glow of the moon, she now got a better look at that hateful face. Gnashing her teeth, why are you here? What you should care about isn't why I am here, it's whether or not you can safely return to your home. Slow and steady in her advancement, Bai Yan's smiling face became intimidating and dangerous. Bai Yan, what are you trying to do? Stepping backward, she gulped. For some unknown reason, a sense of dread and fear gripped Bai Ji's heart right now. Adorable treasured fox, divine doctor mother overturning the heavens. Chapter 58, Bai Ji takes a beating. It was at this moment a muffled sound came from above. To Bai Ji, she can only feel her head spinning after getting hit with something. Slimy to the touch as she rubbed her forehead, only then does she realizes it that sets her own blood. Twisting from her anger, she screams with madness in her voice, Who, who dares to hit me? Yet, just as Bai Ji finished turning her head, another whack came flying down from above at her shoulder. Bai Ji, you bitch, I'm the one beating you. Under the moonlight, a young girl with strong excitement coursing through her face was holding the stick responsible for the attack. It's you. When seeing for the first time it's Lan Xiaoyun girl cousin that's behind herself, Bai Ji's eye went red instantly. Humph, what else can a defeated loser like you do other than attacking from behind? Defeated loser, do you mean me? Playing with the dangerous stick in her hand, Lan Xiaoyun made no effort to hide her willingness to use it. If you didn't have help the other day then I would never have lost to you. No matter how fierce a tiger was, it cannot fend off multiple foes at once, hence the reason why Bai Ji was able to pull one over Lan Xiaoyun before. And to make the story even more aggravating, the shameless wrench had the audacity to claim she's the one being bullied after returning home, causing Bai Zheng Xiang to run off to make trouble at the Lan house afterwards. Xiaoyun, loosening her crossed arms, Bai Yan slowly advances forward. Tonight you can vent to your heart's content. I will take responsibility for whatever happens today. 
A dominant and overbearing aura exudes out of that red figure, closing off any possible escape for the prey. You too. Steaming with anger, Baiji attempts to point her finger at Amonli to be whacked again by that hateful stick. All of a sudden, a mournfully painful cry echoes across the night sky, making the night ever so spooky. Lan Xiaoyun, you bitch. Clinging onto her painful arm, she bears her fangs at the encroaching figures in a last-ditch effort to make herself more threatening. Then without indication, Bai Yan who was standing behind her cousin suddenly leans backward with one of her legs raised forward. Bang! One kick to the chest, that's all it took to make Bai Ji fly across the street and smash into a tree. From her mouth, blood begins to vomit out of that twisted mouth. Seeing her enemy's messed up appearance, Lan Xiaoyun became ecstatic and rushed over like a raving wolverine. With herself on top, she began trouncing the girl below with her punishing fist. Weren't you really arrogant just now? What's going on? Hurry and come at me. I still have my cousin here. Over the years, there's been quite a bit of steam pent up inside Lan Xiaoyun's body thanks to Bai Ji's doing. To have her grievances answered tonight, there's no way she won't let it rip. Very soon, the girl below had lost her consciousness at the constant beating from above. Xiaoyun, remember not to kill her. She hasn't reached the point where she can die yet. Slowly retracting her gaze from the pair, Bai Yan's vision shifts up to the night sky as her brow curled into a slight knot. It's been so long, they should be here soon. Just as she was thinking this, a loud screech of an eagle's call broke the night. This also startled the venting girl on the floor, making Lan Xiaoyun jumping up with fright. Cousin, what happened? As soon as this question was made, a giant eagle swoops down from above and lands in front of them with lightning speed. Riding on top was a beautiful woman. Dressed in a pink dress with an alluring smile, the first image one would get from this person would be a brothel keeper. Adorable treasured fox, divine doctor mother overturning the heavens. Chapter 59, Flower Brothels Who Are Luo. Cousin, Lan Xiaoyun nervously tugs at Bai Yan's sleeve, who is this woman? Is she here to seek you? She didn't answer the question, only smiling at the newcomer, who are Luo, you seem to be late. Ho ho ho. Giggling at the remark, the woman jumps off the eagle in one smooth swing. I met a little trouble on the road, that's why I'm late. But mistress, who is this girl here, your sister? She's not bad, why not let her come to my flower brothel for work? How about it? Those winking eyes could literally discharge electricity from how foxy they were. Even for Lan Xiaoyun who's a girl, her skin was going all goose bump on her. Cousin. Grouchily sending a stare over to the provocative woman, she asks, who is she, and what is? Lan Xiaoyun wanted to say flower brother in the end, but her hands reflexively cupped her own mouth to keep it in. That flower brothel. Who are Luo? Xiaoyun is still a child, you mustn't scare her. Bai Yan didn't get angry at the little tease. She knew long ago this subordinate of hers would be like this. Besides, she's not the type to suppress her people's true nature, that's not her style. Mistress, I'm only playing with her a little. Giggling again, she sends a charming smile at that little face hiding behind Bai Yan, no matter how courageous I am, I would never dare do something as to send your cousin there to receive clients. Flower brother, on the surface it's a place where men could to play with women if they have the money, but in reality, it's an intelligence agency. Even now, no other forces out there know exactly how much information this power has in its vault. This fact was no secret among the powerful forces out there in these lands. Rather, it's the ordinary folks who have clue about this organization and continues to take it as nothing more than a brothel. Therefore, as the young miss of the land house, she's not new to this name. Cousin, she is someone from the flower brothel. Really that flower brothel, Lan Xiaoyun pulls it by Yan's sleeve, her lips trembling as she asked, why would she be calling you mistress? There's no mistake, she's the keeper of the flower brothel, who are Luo. Bai Yan didn't deny it. Due to the extreme shock of the news, Lan Xiaoyun nearly fainted on the spot. Never in her dreams did she expect the true master behind the flower brothel would be her own cousin here. Oh heavens, is there anything in this world more explosive and sensational? Cousin, hurry and tell me, how did you become the master of the flower brothel? They are an entity that can stand up to the royal family, a power that can crush the Bai family. 
Flushed red from being overexcited, the girl nearly couldn't breathe there. If this matter becomes known to grandfather, it's likely he will faint from excitement. I will tell you later about that. Making a faint smile, Bayan shifts her gaze back to Hualuo. There is one thing I want you to do. As soon as she heard Bayan was getting down to business, Hualuo's expression turned serious. Mistress, please instruct me. I suspect my mother's death must have something to do with you wrong. You are to thoroughly investigate this matter. In addition, you are to find out the activities of every member of the Bai house over these years, cold in her gaze, including Yurong's history before she married into the Bai family. Raising her head in surprise, Hua Luo looks to the woman she calls mistress and found a chill running down her back. The Bai family has done too many evil things over the years. Even if I destroy them now it won't be enough to make up for their sins. I must ruin their reputation so they can never stand up again. Adorable treasured fox, divine doctor mother overturning the heavens. Chapter 60, Confused Young Girl. Yes, mistress, lowering her head, who Luo respectfully responds. And another thing, pausing for a second, go find several good hands and have them infiltrate the by house to protect my brother. If anyone dares touch him, have those people finish him off. There's no need to get confirmation from me on this matter. But, what if the one to harm Sir Seo is by Zheng Xiang? Hua Luo hesitates for a moment before asking. No matter who it is, it's the same. It's true she wants to find out whether or not her mother's death was really related to Yu Rong, and to make those in the Bai family regret for the rest of their life. However, all of that must be done on the premise of her brother being unharmed. If that can't be done, then all of the prior goals can be ignored and she will immediately take action to destroy those people. Subordinate here understands. Half kneeling on the ground, Hua Luo shows utter respect in her voice. She knows, now that her mistress has spoken, it means the end of the good days for the Bai family. Cousin. Lan Xiaoyun blankly stared at her cousin's commanding appearance. For the first time ever, she found Bai Yan to be extremely handsome despite being of the same female sex. Let's see who will dare call her cousin a useless person again. What are you thinking? The crisp voice rang in front of the girl, knocking her back to reality. Making a happy smile, Lan Xiaoyun replies with glee in her voice, I was just thinking if you were to be a man instead, I will definitely have you marry me. Twitching in the mouth, Bai Yan had trouble keeping up with this young girl, then should I be glad my mother didn't produce me as a man? You're too much cousin. Stamping her feet unhappily like she's hurt by that remark, Lan Xiaoyun runs up to hook her arms around Bai Yan's, I don't care, I'm clinging onto you from now on. Whatever good stuff you have in the future, you must keep me in on it. Making a hem sound to accept the request, Bai Yan didn't mind it at all. She had a brother all her life so it's not bad to experience the bond of a lovely sister too. At the thought of Bai Seo again, her heart gradually sank again. It has been a long time since the dinner ended and she still don't know the conditions of her brother right now. This worries her. Fortunately, she took precautions before to have little rice keep an eye on the boy. At least she knows he won't be in any life-threatening danger. Xiaoyun, let us go make a visit to the Bai house. In the end her emotions got the better of her. Okay, Lan Xiaoyun's gaze shifts back to the unconscious Bai Ji on the ground, do we need to bring her along? From Bai Yan's beautiful face, a wicked smile comes out, we were just passing by when we found the unconscious girl so of course we got to send her back. After all, we're good people with a kind heart. Don't you agree? Widening her eyes from total astonishment, the girl never thought her cousin would be like this. So shameless. Xiaoyun. After a few steps out, Bai Yan stopped again and seems to be contemplating something. For the time being don't tell anyone about me in the flower brothel. Why? The young girl clearly didn't understand. Pricking her brow, she asked, not even our grandparents. This isn't the right time to show my cards yet. When I'm ready, I will personally inform our grandparents. Her enmity with the Bai house will definitely be cleared up, but now's not the time yet. Nodding her head like she's getting it, Lan Xiaoyun didn't refuse it, I still don't know why you are waiting but if it's your decision then it must be right. When these words came out, Bai Yan had already started to drift away. 
Not wanting to be left behind, Lan Xiaoyun simply picked up one of Bai Ji's leg and dragged her along on the ground. Bump, bump. Due to the severe pain of constantly bumping into the random things on the street, Bai Ji eventually came back to her senses. Unfortunately for her, as soon as she wanted to yell out to curse at the one responsible for her pain, her head ends up slamming into a stone corner, thus knocking her out again.